Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to SF Podcast. Yeah, belt yourself in. It's going to be a long one here. I'm going into childhood cartoons. But you get me, I'm getting me hurt. Ah, what you got here is this. Thank you. The only aunt I really have left now, my midget aunt. Thank you, though. A couple years ago for Christmas, I, I every year she's like, what do you want? Her mother and when they were still around, and my grandparents, you know, what do you want for Christmas? You're hard to buy for. I was like, oh, I'll make a wish, wish list on Amazon. They go look, pick out stuff. Well, she got me this Pink Panther volume, too, which is 66 or 68. Blake Edwards, Pink Panther cartoon collection. This is a Kino Lower. I didn't realize it was Kino Lower. I put it in, watch. I was like, oh, these look really good. I like the Pink Panther stuff. They got, you know, each episode, pre- I'm not everyone, but a big chunk of got commentaries, a couple little extras, you know. They're not... Super packed with extra, but they got enough here. That's one of those that's probably like nine bucks. Well, it sat on the shelf. And I'll show you, let's see. And you get like commentaries from like author Mark Arnold, historian Jerry Beck, filmmaker Greg Ford, cartoon writer William Ho- Hohauser, and veteran to Patty Freeling, storyman Art Leonardi. Art Leonardi did comics for a while. From page to screen in the pink, from page to screen in the pink blueprint, pink out TV version. It's all the episodes. 125 minutes, you know. And these have the, and they got the same kind of, I don't, my only issue is Kino Lorber, and they have the MGM contract, it seems like. I don't like how plain they're just, look, you got the, that's a, not a bad cover. I just like more color on it. So I had that for a long time. You see, well, I got two and three, and there's like six of these. I want to get all, but Kino Lorber had their big summer sale, and these things were marked down to like six bucks a pop. But I didn't order any more of them. I was doing an order and like, okay, you had to hit like 50 bucks to get uh, free shipping. I was right off of it. I found something. I'll show it in a minute. Uh, and I walked in like, oh shit, I forgot how good. It's from the set, this series. I forgot how good the Pink Panther was. When I get paid again, I'm going to do another order for the sale runs up. So that's when I got volume one here, which I just got in today. I've not watched it yet. And it's got, you know, same group of people, or Bob Kurtz, Archive Sound by you know. There's one. There's, th- there's three. If you don't know these, these are, they're mostly silent cartoons. It's like, dun 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 You know, it, it was... I like slapsticky stuff, and Pink Panther as a kid appealed to me because he was one where it was weird. Okay, as a kid, after school and on after school and on Saturday mornings, from when I was as far back as I can remember, so like three till God, man, I was in like I was like ten or twelve when it stopped on the major channels, and like it was just the UHF channel doing this, but like every. Day, uh, like from five o'clock to about eight in the morning on the UHF channel, and then from three to four or five in the afternoons, sometimes two on the UHF channel, and like the major networks like ABC, NBC, you know, this would be syndicated. You got Bugs Bunny and Friends, which was all the Looney Tunes shit. Usually you got like a Flintstones or something like that. And you got, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, you got like some kind of Hanna Barbera, Hanna Barbera like compilation show. Like, I'm a rock, a rocket Bowl was an ownership, but the Hanna Barbera one we got was what the fuck did they call it? it? Had like Augie Doggy and Ricochet Rabbit. We got like one of the lower level ones. But Pink Panther, which I loved, either came on early in the morning or it came on Saturdays early in the morning. So I didn't see it a lot because I remember I remember wanting to go see the Pink Panther movies. So I thought they were about this. I didn't realize they were Peter Sellers, the Spectre Clue. So as I got older, I loved them. That's what got me into Pink Panther. So I'm like, oh, I want to see these again, and they're just so well done. And this would be years '68 through '69. But we get Behind the Feline, the cartoon phenomenon featuring Dave DePatty and Blake Edwards. Audio commentary select episodes of Mark Arnold, Jerry Beck, Ger- Greg Ford, Rojo or Mike Cazale, I'm guessing. 138 minutes. Okay, so they got those three. Now, the rest of these are just alphabetical order, which is kind of cool because the, the best one's at the end. One of them is a DVD. These are all, there's other, this studio did other cartoons. None of them last as long as Pink Panther. But most of these got shown, one of these is a TV cartoon. Most of these got shown on TV in some form or another when Pink Panther started getting syndicated. So we got the first one. This is one most people remember. The Ant and the Aardvark. This is a little Ant and Zarvark trying to eat him constantly. This is, what year is this? I don't give me a year, but hold on. 
Originally produced for theatrical release and later broadcast part of the new Pink Panther television series, the NR revived the timeless cartoon conflict of Predator and Prey and modernized it with a reverent sense of humor and a splashy color palette and and Bellic of the late 60s and early 70s. The special edition includes all 17 episodes of the Ant and Arvark was on interviews with the men and women who collaborate on this animated classic. Two documentaries by Greg Ford, Goodbye Warner Brothers, Hello to Patty Freeling, and of Aardvark's Ants, Inspectors and Cranes, featuring Jerry Beck, Barbara Donatelli, Will Friedwald, Doug Goodwin, Art Leonardi, Joe Saracusia, and Fritz Freeling Archive already. Audio commentaries select films. Okay. This, only has certain, this was only one that each one of these... these these are one discs, really? I gotta say, some of these are two discs. This is only one disc. I just got it in today, but I remember seeing these as a kid a lot. Like these were on there. They've done some Pink Panther revivals that show up there. This one, the disc is not in here. It's in my player right now. When I film this stuff, since I got the house myself, my dog is an attention hound. Hey, baby, she just walked in here. She heard me say my dog. So I put stuff on the TV to keep her entertained. She loves cartoons. So I put on the dog father. This one I don't remember. Uh, but, like, in the art of art, this and one another one of these Blu-rays were, like, four bucks in this Kino. So, I'm like, I'll take a chance. So, we got the Dog Father. And this is spoofing the 1972 blockbuster, The Godfather, will paying homage to classic ancient pictures of the 30s and 40s. Deep Patty Freelings, The Dog Father, centers around a bumbling pack of canine mafioso. Backed by his evergreen henchman pug and the diminutive Louis, voice artist extraordinaire Dawes Butler, the mumble-mouthed dog father, voiced by Bob Holt, unleashes his own breed of disorganized crime in a series of 17 cartoons that were a conscious throwback to a golden age of animation. Two documentaries by Greg Ford and William Hohauser, Chips Off the Old Blockbusters, and Tales of Production and Production Overload, featuring Mark Horner, historian Jerry Beck, our cartoon director, producer J.R. Dilworth, ink and paint specialist Barbara Donatelli, composer Doug Goodwin, director, animator Art Leonardo, and Leon Ars, Martin Struder. Audio commentaries for Slack Clones and same group. 117 minutes. It's only one disc. And each one of them, you go on the inside. I like these covers like that. So, okay, that's my Aunt Harvard. This is my dog. This is the only DVD. This, as far as I know, was made for TV. This is Mr. Jaws. I did not know this exists. I forgot about this. I might have heard about it. Uh, Movie Jaws, big hits. They made like a cartoon. Mm. Cartoon rip off. I mean, hold on. Hanna Barbera had Jabber. It was a Hanna Barbera Ruby Spears with Jabber Jaws. But it was, you know, Scooby Doo with a shark. This, I don't know because I'm not watching. It came in there, but this was like two bucks. It was cheap. With sharp meaning, it struck America in the mid 70s. It was only natural that cartoon character surfaced inspired by the summer's biggest blockbuster. The result was Mr. Jaws, which represents one of the final accomplishments of the legendary animator Robert McKimson. When Sergio Catchphrase, gotcha, and sidekick Catfish, and comparable Arnold Stang, the German accented Great White, versed by Artie Johnson of TV's Laughing, swam for a remarkable 34 episodes, which revised some of the popular trips of classic animation and shorts while providing clever send ups of the decade's other pop culture phenomenons. Two documentaries. Oh, I've got those already. It's off the block. We'll bother to production. Audio commentaries, same group. Uh, 206 minutes, a lot of episodes. These were made for TV as far as I know. Like I said, I'd never heard of them. But for that price, I took a chance. This one, I kind of remember seeing a little. This is Roland and Rat Fate. This is Roland's Rat Fate. It's just, you know, they created two characters to see what kind of shit they could plug them into. This would be what the Thomas melodramatic tradition of dueling polar opposites became the foundation of many an animated conflict. But never were good and evil so stylishly renders in the Roland and Ratfink cartoon. Square jawed, Roland and the green complected Ratfink occupy the roles of Yin and Yang with hilarious plume. Peace Nick versus Warmonger. Stalwart singing cowboy versus scurious cattle rustler. Effortedly sensitive flower child versus bomb throwing miscreant. The special edition showcases all 17 episodes of the Patty Freeland's Rolling Raffi, which rank among Hollywood's most innovative cartoons of the late 60s and early 70s and continue to inspire last in the 21st century. Okay, it's got two documentaries by Greg Ford and William Hohauer, which is the Patty Freeland's Odd Couples, which I think is on another release. And music and sound mixologist featuring Jerry Beck, Bobber Donatelli, Will Freeland. All your commentaries, nobody knew on that. This is 107 minutes. It's only one disc. This is another one that's like four bucks. And you see the main covers for these are like pencil drawings, which is cool. I like the more colorful thing. And all these besides the Pink Panther Volume 2 and the one I'm going to show you and a little bit of Dollar Fire, I have not watched. When I sit down and watch these, I'll do a lot longer one on this. Like the, the one I'm going to talk about, I'm going to do one after I finish this turn because this was great. Tijuana Toads. I have forgotten about this completely. Like... 
I saw these as a kid as the Texas Toads, because when they put them on TV, because these were like late 60s, early 70s. It's two toads down in Tijuana. They're just trying to eat, eat food. They have very stereotypical Hispanic accents. And there's a lot of stereotypes in this. Like a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. You know, it's like, wow. I, like I said, I saw them as the Texas Toads, which I remember being kind of weird in the series. They referred to them being Tijuana a lot. What I didn't know is they had to reanimate some parts and they completely changed the audio. I thought they just changed the name. So the first order down the Kino Lorber sale, which I got like, hold on, I'll show you some stuff I got real quick. Two of the things I got on that pack was Stone Cold and Porky's two and three. But I saw two, I was trying to hit the $50 mark. I added this, this is what I was talking about earlier. This was like nine bucks. This is the most expensive one because they know this is the one I think until this came out, the only way you could get these in this form was this, you know, was, there wasn't a way. You had to get the Texas Toad version. These are the original theatrical airing. So let's look at that. And this is, it's just one disc. Pull it out. There's a Toad on it. It's a, what, El Fatso and Poncho, I think? Like an amphibian Lauren Hardy, Tijuana Toads revives the thin guy, fat guy for you for comedy and dows it with a distinct southern, south of the border flavor. Toads Poncho and El Toro. El Toro. Okay, because it's Fatso and some it's Fatso and Banjo and the re rewritten Texas one. Engage in mad cat mischief and even a bit of romance while seeking it to advance themselves with within the biological food chain, giving chase to grasshoppers, Japanese beetles, and flies while evading comic characters like snakes, cats, dogs, and a particularly dopey cream. This edition includes all 17 lap filled episodes rendered in distinct the Patty Freeling style of the late sixties, early seventies, and newly remastered in high definition. You get two documentary, which is that odd couple mix one, which I've talked about before. You get audio commentaries for these, with some same group of people, but then you get Go for the Crow featuring the alternate Texas Toad soundtrack. You get one episode with the Texas Toad soundtrack and the original version. These are, I was laughing my ass off at parts, and other parts going, wow. Like the Japanese flying beetle has buck teeth and wears glasses, and the old miso sari, and does karate, and oh god. I watch it go, wow. Yeah, I see, you know, and it's, it's stuff like this. I would see this in cartoons because some of the Bugs Bunny and Looney Tunes cartoons that have been censored or had parts cut or are not really shown anymore now were still out there in the syndication packages when I was a kid. Now, I was born in the mid seven, the beginning of the mid 70s. I was born in 74. So I can remember, you know, still seeing, you know, Definitely seeing Black Guy Skaggs and Bugs Bunny cartoons, and you. I don't remember seeing stuff like Bugs Bunny nips the nips, but I remember seeing some other ones where there's a little bit of that kind of stuff in it. So this, you know, kind of surprised me when they say it on TV because this is like '78, I think, so when it came out. You know, they didn't, they changed it. But now all I'm missing is there's an inspector set that is one of the more expensive ones because the inspector has a little detective guy from the, the, the inspector cool so. It's like two discs, so it's like 12 bucks. I think the sales go over now, too. And I got to get the other three volumes of Pink Panther, so. They'll probably go on my Christmas wish list. And maybe my favorite Ann will pick them up, but man, just look at this. So many hours of great classic. We got Tijuana Toads. We got Rolling and Rat Think. We got, you know, Mr. Jaws. Can't wait to watch that. The Dog Father. Maggie, you like the Dog Father? Ant and the Aardark, and then, you know, three volumes of Pink Panther. So that's what, how many Blu-rays? There's seven Blu-rays of great classic cartoons. And you can watch a lot of these. Now, I don't think T-Wan Toes is part of it. But, excuse me. If you get the channel Me TV, which is an over-the-air channel, Dish Network does not offer it right now. I don't know about cable companies, but if you, most, it seems like most of your uh, cable replacement things, like Hulu Live, YouTube TV, Sling, I know Friendly, which is the word Friendly without all the vowels in it, besides a lot has it, and it's, it's, it, the service is cheap. Me TV Saturday mornings has like a Popeye and Pink Panther hour block of cartoons that I record every week. And they don't, the prints look really good. They don't look as good as these, but they look really good for you. Know, and it, I want to support cartoons on broadcast channels. I hate that. I got some friends of mine who, their kids are we're old enough now, they don't really watch cartoons. But where they live, it's either pay out the butt for satellite and he's not going to do that or just use an antenna 
and their kids for years they're the only cartoons they really got to see until me started showing some stuff was um the stuff on PBS. So I would loan them all the I was like, these kids are growing up without Bugs Bunny here. You know, here's the golden here's the Looney Tunes golden anniversary set, you know, with the big box says like, here, watch this, you know, here's you know, show them all this stuff. And they fell in love with like the oldest boy loved Astro Boy for the longest time. And the youngest one was huge in the DuckTales. So I, I got to support my cartoons, but I'm out, everybody. So it's going to be a long one. Hope you enjoyed them. If you did, give me that thumbs up. Leave a comment, subscribe, all the other bullshit. Talk to everybody later. Bye-bye.